And we all talk about how COVID disrupted global politics forever and changed the way nations interact. But Norman, is food security the real political fight of our lifetime? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, if at the moment you've got the farmers protests, which have, you know, that happened in Holland, Germany, and now France, right? There's a perception that there is a war against farmers as the inevitable result of the net zero policy. And without farmers, you don't have any food. And of course, I think the globalists always saw food as the sort of ultimate means of control of the population. If you control the food supplies, then you can control the population. But actually, if you think about it, the farmers certainly all recognise that there's a war against them. There's a unified consensus in that sense. And again, we see a lot of the population are behind, do support the farmers' protests in that sense. But actually, there are very different motivations for the farmers' actions across the different countries. So, for example, the Dutch farmers, that was all about the ludicrous nitrogen emission targets, which was leading to actual ex expropriation of many farms. Whereas for the Germans... It was they were protesting cuts to special subsidies, for example, that they got on diesel fuel. And with the French, it's mainly about overregulation. Now, I think it's great that I welcome any challenge to sort of the WF Great Reset, you know, net zero targets and all that sort of nonsense. But actually, none of those protests, or I don't think any of the protest leaders in those movements, actually reject the whole climate change net zero narrative, which I think is a complete scam. You might have a real point there because I'm hearing a lot about them not liking the taxes, them being upset about being pushed off their land, but we're not seeing a rebellion against the ideology of climate change in general. I mean, the French farmers right now are enacting a recreation of the siege of Paris. I mean, they are trying to starve yeah. their city counterparts into seeing some kind of common sense. They're blockading roads with tractors, they're piling haystacks onto the backs of lorries and then setting them on fire. I mean, farmers have even attacked the competing lorries that are coming in from Belgium and Germany, and they famously poured 10,000 litres of Spanish wine onto the freeway. I mean, that's the French for you. What can you say? But, Norman, this is skirting pretty close to civil war behaviour, of course, apart from there being no intent for violence. As political commentators, whether you think it's the biggest fight there is or not, is it still showing a breakdown of the United Nations, the Europeans' policies and ideologies that perhaps these net zero ideas that are being pushed onto us at great expense don't work in the real world? You gave the example of Sri Lanka. They didn't see that as an obvious example of why it wouldn't work in the real world. You'd think they never would. But no, they are doubling down. They're tripling down on this. And incidentally, to go back to this point about I don't believe that any of these activists amongst the farmers are really challenging the whole net zero climate change agenda. I mean, I'll give you an example. I mean, look, they actually want to disassociate themselves with people who actually challenge the sort of the Great Reset and the whole climate change narrative. So, for example... Look, our, our friend Ava Velardingerbrook was told that, although she did go to Germany, she was told that she was going to be unwelcome to join it because she was considered to be far right. I mean, the mainstream media, the globalists, have still managed to convince the most of the population that anybody who really challenges the Great Reset, the whole net zero climate change agenda, is somehow still far right conspiracy theorists. We, we managed to break through on COVID to the extent that we really did change the narrative, in particular with regard to, like, for example, the vaccines, right? So we, despite all their control over mainstream media, we managed to convince the public generally that the, the vaccines weren't really safe and effective. And that destroyed their whole agenda for having these COVID vaccines twice a year forevermore. We, we did that. But I don't think we've made any real penetration against the whole net zero climate change agenda.